Hello, and welcome to Auten Math. In this edition of Auten Math, we're going, to all, we're going to handle some problems involving absolute value equations and inequalities. The first problem asks us to rewrite the absolute value equation as two linear equations. So what it's asking us to do is to remove the absolute value symbols and rewrite the equation as two linear equations. Now remember when we remove the absolute value symbols, that C value, or 7, <clears throat> we need to change at least one in one of the equations we need to change to a negative value. So I'm going to rewrite the equations. Uh, the first one, we're just going to leave that 7 and the C value alone. So I have 3 minus 2x is equal to 7. And in the second equation, we need to change the C value to a negative value. So I have 3 minus 2x is equal to negative 7. So those are the, my two linear equations. We can go ahead and solve from there, but we're not going to because the question just asks us to rewrite as two linear equations. Okay, now in this question, they're asking us to solve the equation. Okay, so we're going to rewrite this as two equations, similar to how we did in the uh, first problem. So I have 7 minus 2x is equal to 5, and 7 minus 2x is equal to negative 5. And now I'm going to solve. So on the first side, what I'll do is I'll add 2x to both sides and subtract 5 from both sides. So I have 2 is equal to 2x, and then x is equal to 1, dividing uh, both sides by 2. And the second equation, I'm going to add both sides, uh, add 2x to both sides, and I'm going to add 5 to both sides, so I end up with 12 is equal to 2x, or x is equal to 6. So x is equal to 1, or x is equal to 6. I should go back and check my work to make sure that it's correct. If I have x is equal to 1, I have 7 minus 2 is equal to 5. That's correct. 7 minus 12 <coughs> is equal to negative 5, but the absolute value of negative 5 is 5. So those two uh, solutions are correct. And the next uh, equation, or the next uh, problem, we're asked to rewrite the absolute value inequality as a compound inequality. So remember, if it's less than uh, some value, we're going to refer back to our table. If it's less than some value, you know that it's going to be and. So it's going to be in between the negative c and the c values. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this as 5 minus x is less than or equal to 2. And then I'm going to write and. 5 minus x. I'm going to switch the symbols here, or switch the direction, and then change the sign. <clears throat> x is greater than or equal to negative 2. So remember, it's going to be less than the largest value and greater than the smallest value. Okay, so I've rewritten my uh, two inequalities. I'm going to subtract 5 from the left-hand side in, in both of these. So I have negative x is less than or equal to negative 3 in this case, and negative x is greater than or equal to negative 7. All right, so now I run into the problem where I have a negative coefficient for the variable in the inequality. I'm going to have to divide by negative 1. When I do that, I'm going to change the direction of the symbol. So I'm dividing this variable by negative 1. I end up with x. I change the direction of the inequality is greater than negative 3 divided by negative 1 is 3. And again, dividing by negative 1, x changing this direction of the symbol, less than or equal to, dividing negative 7 by negative 1, 7. So I maintain the integrity of the <clears throat> table. It's going to be less than the largest value, greater than the smallest value. So I can rewrite this as 3, x is greater than or equal to, less than or equal to 7. And that is my result for uh, this particular compound inequality. Okay, last problem, word problem. I've got a tire manufacturing manufacturer. Uh, when you get a car, if you have a car, you can look at the side of the tire and it'll show you that there's a recommended tire pressure or a maximum PSI, pounds per square inch, for a particular tire. So when you go to pump up the tire, you should not pump it up beyond a certain amount. And this tire manufacturer gives us a range. And the range is going to be uh, within 2 PSI of the recommended 32. So the range is going to be between... 30, and I guess it can be equal to, uh, let's just say this is x, 
and 34. So how do we rewrite this as an absolute value inequality for the recommendation? Well, we know that <clears throat> regardless of what we um, pump the tires to, that when we subtract 32 from that value, we should end up with either plus or minus 2. Uh, and if, if we're considering an absolute value number, then it's going to be 2. So the absolute value of the difference between what you have and what the recommended tire pressure should be should always be 2. So I'm going to rewrite this as, <clears throat> uh, well, let's just say 32 minus x. Or you could re rewrite this as x minus 32, it doesn't matter. Is equal to, or actually needs to be, this is an inequality. So excuse me, it needs to be less than 2. So I'm going to rewrite this as less than 2. So if I have a tire pressure of 35, 32 minus 35 is going to be negative 3. Absolute value of negative 3 is 3. 3 is not less than 2. So a PSI of 35 is not going to be acceptable, or it's going to be outside of the suggested, suggested tire pressure for that particular brand of tire. Now I can also rewrite this as x minus 32 is less than 2. Either way it would work.